Good morning, good morning. I don't want to get up. <laughs> my bonnet has completely come off my head. I have a lot to do today, y'all. I have to wash my bed linen today. Today is the day. Mondays, I reset for work. So, on the agenda today, I have to wash my bed linen, get my 30-minute walk in, wash two loads of clothes, mop my kitchen floor, do two videos, and prepare myself for work. Yeah, that's what's on the agenda today. I don't want to get up. It's so... I didn't turn my heat on, so it's sort of chilly in here. Mm, mm, mm. But I must get up. I had a great weekend, y'all. I got some rest. Oh, spent a little bit of time with my little stanker butt. My little nana bean. But anywho, oh, and guess what I'm doing today, y'all? I am dyeing my hair. I'm going to finally go ahead and dye my hair black. Because the gray has taken over. And the gray is making me look like a grandma. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's get up and get this day started. I don't know why my camera went out, but um, I filled both of them up. Let's close that. And let's see. Power on. And I'm doing... What am I doing? Bidding. See where it says bidding? The bidding cycle. And you mash start. And it will begin to turn. <sighs> but it does well, y'all. So, this is my laundry room. Yes, it is. I used to... I still do love plants, y'all. Um, That's my pot right there. And my soil. I'm going to get back to doing my plants. Um... Yeah, I love plants and flowers, so I'm going to get back to doing that. But okay, the laundry's in. On to the next task. All right, y'all, so I'm going to wash up these little bit of dishes I got to do this morning. Just a few dishes, not many. I'm get my stuff done this morning. Thing. Wash out my sink. Getting stuff done this morning, so I have some free time this afternoon. Getting it all taken care of. I have. Oh, I'm getting ready to throw that in. It went down the sink. <sighs> Y'all getting your morning stuff done. You got your day planned. What you're ready to do. I do, so. Get these dishes done. I need to mop my kitchen floor. It's pretty outside, y'all. Very pretty. Um, yep, we put Clorox in our water. Hold on, y'all. Got to open it just a little bit. Not too much. Just a teed bit of Clorox. Teed bit. But, um, I don't know what happened to my video a while ago. It just cut off. Because I had recorded more. And it just had cut off for some reason. I use a lot of dish soap because I like to see bubbles. I want to see bubbles. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, I ain't got much to do. Yeah, I have a... Hold on, y'all. Last night, I had me a little snack of Rice Krispies. I need to take out my trash, because it is what? It's full, honey. My trash is full. All right, I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit while I wash these dishes. Hold on. All right, I'm going to talk to y'all while I wash these dishes up really, really quick. Hope everybody had a great, phenomenal weekend. I did. I'm thinking about making me some pancakes uh, this morning. I wanted some bacon, but I don't have no turkey bacon. I don't have any turkey sausage. Maybe I'll just cook me some. What time is it? My clock, I got two, my kitchen clock and my clock in my bathroom need to be thrown away, honey. They are broke. They are broke. I need to get me two more kitchen clocks. But, um, just getting my morning going. And y'all, this right here, what I got on, this was my mom's, um, house gown she used to wear. And I kept it when she passed away. She used to wear it all the time. And since I look so much like my mother, as you can see, <laughs> um, yeah, I just miss her so much, too. Um, getting the day started, get your day started. Make sure you work on yourself, work on um, things that you want to do for yourself. And yeah, just enjoy your day. And um, like I said, I am preparing for my work work day. Whew, one day I won't be preparing for that. I'll just be totally focused. Oh, I should have had that thing soaking. I'll be totally focusing on, you know, what I really enjoy doing. But um, yeah, we're getting this work day started. Y'all be encouraged. Whatever your day brings. Um, I was watching, um, I forgot the name of the guy's channel. All Things Theology, I think. Was it him? I don't know. It might have not have been him. I'm not sure. But, um, the famous football player, he interviewed, um, Jamal Bryant. And, um, you know, there was... I, I'm gonna tell you like this here, y'all. I'm just over these mega pastors like Jamal Bryan and you know people like Kurt Franklin or whatever that's in the gospel and stuff. I do pray that they come to Jesus Christ before they take their last breath. I do, cause I don't want nobody. I mean, I don't want nobody to end up forever separated from God. And you know what? People think you know. Yes, the Bible says that people. Are, unbelievers, those that didn't accept Jesus Christ, they're saved, they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And people think that the lake of fire is the ultimate torment. You know, people say, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be thrown to the lake of fire. But you know what the ultimate torment is going to be? It's not so much as the lake of fire, you know. And I really don't think it's a lake of fire Really, I just think that's the closest to torment that the Bible, that God could describe to us. You know, you think about a lake of fire, that's ultimate torment, right? But I think that's the closest God came to to give us a description of what it's going to feel like to be forever separated from him. You know, I be and I heard Zach Poonin say this, y'all, and I began to think about that thing. That is so true. You know, God had, talks to us in ways that we can understand. That's why he did a lot of parables. I don't necessarily think it may be a lake of really fire. But I think the torment that's associated with a lake of fire is the closest he can describe to our brains of how it's going to feel to be forever separated from his presence. See, right now... Everybody is experiencing the presence of God. 
They're experiencing God's grace. A rattlesnake experiences God's grace. God makes sure a rattlesnake got food every day. He gets the grace of God. The meanest person that you can think of, terrorists, uh, people that commit, uh, have abortions and the doctors that perform them, the, the cruelest thing that you can think of right now, guess what? The grace of God still is on that person. It's it because we're in this time now where God's grace, the doors of grace are still open. God's hand is still stretched out to the uh, worst person in the world. His grace is still here. His presence is still here. But there's going to come a day when guess what? The doors of grace will close. His hands will withdraw. Time will be no more. The Bible said the heavens going to roll up like a scroll. Can you imagine? The heavens going to roll That time will be over. And those that didn't accept Christ will be forever separated from God. That is what the torment is. That is what our condition will be if we don't accept Jesus Christ. It's not so much as a lake of fire, but it's you are not going to have any of God's presence. You are not going to have any of God's grace. It will be gone. And you're going to find yourself forever separated from God. And that's why it's called hell. No God there. No exit there. No grace there. No return there. And see, we can't hardly think about that. But if you sit down and think about that, if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted him in your heart, if you've not been a born-again believer, if you know how to change your ways and begin to live for Christ, and if, and if uh, I don't want to say that word because I might get my video taken down, but if you wake up on the other side of eternity, and you didn't accept Christ for whatever reason, whether you didn't believe, the Revelation talks about there are going to be unbelievers there. Whether you didn't believe, or whether you said, I'm too young, or whether you said, I got, I don't need God, I got everything going on, or whether you said, honey, I ain't with that church stuff, got all these false preachers, whatever, whatever, whether you say, y'all need to mind your business, whatever your excuse is going to be, you're going to end up in a place. And I know a lot of people think, well, honey, it's hell on earth now. No, it ain't, baby. Because the grace of God is still here. God's presence, Holy Spirit is still here. You ain't experienced a place where there is no God and where there is no, where there is no presence of the God. Don't let me say God because there's a lot of gods. But. If you end up in that place, you're going to be forever tormented. And the torment is not so much the lake of fire, but the torment is there is no grace of God. There is none. Mm, 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 I ain't going. I ain't going. And you say whatever you want and say, I ain't going. I'm going to obey God and I'm going to obey what the Bible say. And I'm going to obey the Holy Spirit. I'm not worried about nothing else, honey. But I'm not going to a place. Where there is no presence of the Most High God. Woo, my Lord. And baby, I hope you don't go either. Lord, I thank you this morning. I hope you don't go either, y'all. All right, so anyway, I think I'm going to end this because I didn't even mean to come on and say all that, but it was said, honey. Don't go. Don't go to a place where there is no God no more. Don't go there, honey. Don't go there. All right, so I love y'all. Y'all be blessed, and I'll be back because we got to have lunch. We got to have lunch. <laughs> Toodles.